Hey guys and welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about all the bags that I sold and why. So I think this should be an interesting look into my bag history. I did buy my first luxury designer bag in 2006. It has been 14 years since and yeah, that's a pretty long time. So of course back then I was much younger. I was in my 20s and I thought that more is more. I thought that as long as I collected any designer bag, I would be happy. But then I realized that having a curated bag wardrobe is more important and having a few things that you truly love is more valuable than having a hundred that you just like okay. So I think in this past 14 years, I have come to know my personal style very well. At the same time, I made a lot of realizations about buying quality over quantity. So back then, I would only buy things on sale and I would buy things on a whim. Like I would be totally impulsive when it comes to buying luxury designer purchases. And I think in the process, I found out that I wasted more money that way. And yeah. I totally learned my lesson so now I only buy things that I truly truly love like I have to be totally in love with it and I should not be able to stop thinking about it and I would wait a few days or even a few months actually before making that big purchase and most of the time these bags need to be saved up for. These bags can be quite expensive, especially as I would be buying them in full price. So yeah, let's get into it. This should be quite a long video. Let's look back into my bag history and talk about all the bags that I've sold and why. This was my first luxury designer handbag and I was just so excited about this bag. I remember how I couldn't sleep and I even planned a trip to Hong Kong just to be able to purchase this bag in the store and have that very special moment when I got the bag. This was definitely a very memorable moment. When I got to the store in Hong Kong, I didn't really get that VIP treatment. I was in line all throughout the process and there were so many people coming in and out. I did have my friends with me to support me and they were very excited for me. And I remember when I asked for the bag and it arrived and I saw it, it was just, I could hear like, oh, the bag is of course a Dami Azure bag and it's it's white and cream and beige and it was just so beautiful, so pristine and I was just so in love with the bag and ever since that time I used that bag every single day no matter what my outfit was, whether or not I was going out for dinner or for drinks or clubbing, I did not care. I used that bag everywhere even for traveling even though it was such a hassle to carry it i used it for traveling i brought it with me everywhere and i would carry it here like this in the crook of my arm and that bag was so memorable for me i did end up selling it after a few years because i stopped using it i did have other bags i bought more bags since and i think that was the reason why i ended up selling it and I noticed how much of a hassle it was to carry it uh, on the crook of my arm or, or as a handheld bag. Uh, not having a shoulder strap really did make a big difference. And I grew tired of it as I used it every single day for every occasion. And as, as I put more things in the bag, I was literally like carrying weights. <laughs> I would have to like switch arms whenever uh, each arm would get tired. But just going to the mall would be a tiresome experience because I would have to like hold it as well as other shopping bags and nothing would be in my shoulder. So I would literally be carrying everything with my hands and that was really a hassle. And so yeah, since selling it, I did rebuy it in the monogram print. So I did repurchase the same bag in 2018 and this time I got it in the monogram print. I'm glad that I did repurchase this because looking at this reminds me so much of where I started back in 2006. I do still use this bag. I use it mostly when I'm wearing dresses or when I don't really need to walk around so much like just for lunches. I mean of course pre-COVID for lunches or for spa dates, usually when my girlfriends, I would use this because it is a very ladylike and beautiful bag. And yeah, that was my first bag purchase and that was also the first bag that I've sold since. 
I bought it in 2007 so this is my second luxury designer bag and of course I didn't really know the distinction between Marc Jacobs and Marc by Marc Jacobs. I didn't know that the brand Marc Jacobs had a younger line called Marc by Marc Jacobs because it looked exactly the same to me. When I went to the Marc by Marc Jacobs store in Hong Kong, I was working in Hong Kong at that time, I picked the bag out from the store. I just scanned the store and just picked the bag and bought it and went home with it. That was really how I shopped before. I guess I was still used to shopping the high street way, like you would just pick up something that you like and just buy it. Of course, nowadays, the way I shop for bags, I really need to think about it 100 times. Like, I need to obsess about it, research about it, and think about it for many months or sometimes years before taking the plunge. And yeah, it is such a big difference from who I was before. Anyway, this bag was a shoulder bag, so it was a nice... A contrast to my Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 which I could only carry this way and yeah it was good to have like that shoulder option but this bag was very heavy it was studded all over and even the straps had studs on them and sometimes uh, the part with the studs would um, flip downwards on my shoulder and I would end up getting stud marks on my shoulder. And of course, since this was a big bag, I filled it to the brim all the time and so I, I would carry it around with me. The leather itself was heavy, so it was a very heavy bag that I would lug around throughout Hong Kong or in Manila when I was here. It did get color transfer. But this was a very light beige bag. And I really love the color. It was so soft and so buttery. But as I used it, I was not careful with it at all. I knew nothing about color transfer. It kept rubbing on my dark blue jeans. In time, I noticed the back part did started to get a dark blue mark from my jeans. And I could not remove it. No matter what I used, I started buying all these leather creams, it would not get out. And so I ended up dyeing the bag black. But when I did that, the leather became really hard and tough and it did not have that same buttery effect anymore. And I was so sad because the reason why I love using that bag is because it was so buttery soft, though it was heavy, it was like so uh, so plush and after dyeing it it just became like a regular bag it just became a regular stiff bag plus to top it off in time the dye started to crack the bag itself started looking very tired and very distressed and i did not like that of course that is why i sold that bag i dyed it black and it did not look as good as it did before so yeah that was the second bag that i bought and sold It was in 2007. I was completely obsessed with the Chloe Paddington bag. It was everywhere at that time. I really wanted one in a beige color or a dark beige color or maybe a black color. I had saved up for it and when I went to the store to buy it, I was actually with two of my friends and somehow they had convinced me to get the mini version which I had no plans of getting. I don't know why I was convinced by them. I really wanted the shoulder bag one and instead I got a mini version that was only handheld. It did not have a strap with it. It was a mini bag which was so cute of course but during the time big bags were in and so I ended up with this handheld mini Paddington bag. Of course, it had this very thick, heavy leather and the heaviest padlock ever. And it was just not right for the moment. Uh, I did not have a place for it. I knew that it was more functional to have the shoulder bag, but instead, I, I did not get what I wanted. I let my friends convince me to get a smaller bag, I don't know, because it was cheaper or cuter, but yeah, I didn't get what I wanted that day and actually I'm still frustrated about it now. I don't know why I did that. I guess back then I was too scared to fight for what I wanted 
and I listen too much to other people and nowadays I don't do that I shop alone I do things on my own and I would rather not have my friends with me when I shop I already know what I want I want what I want and I'm not gonna ask for anyone's opinion anymore I had it back for several more years but it was always such a pain to use imagine the speedy 30 how hassle it was for me to carry around this one was a mini bag and it was so heavy I could not fit a lot of things inside and I had to hold it this way and I'm 5'7", so I'm quite tall. And a mini bag like that without a strap looked very tiny on me. And at that time, for a long time actually, during that era, big bags were really a big thing. It didn't feel like me at all. And it was, to me, it was quite useless because it didn't serve a function. And it wasn't the bag that I wanted. I sold it since. I sold it, I think, on eBay or I think in my Instagram account because it was too heavy, it was too small, there was no room for a strap, even though I tried so hard to try to put a strap on it so I could carry it like a shoulder bag or crossbody, there was no way to do it. The padlock itself was very heavy and yeah, I was, I was glad to, to sell that bag. So this bag, I also bought it in Hong Kong. I remember I was at the Prada store and I asked for this bag that had a huge ribbon on it. It had a huge uh, pink ribbon and the bag itself was so soft. It had the softest leather and it was just so soft and plushy and beautiful. And I remember uh, asking the girl if I could buy it. And she said no. I had to be on a wait list and I had to sign up for it. It was a very long list, super exclusive. And I was like, okay, I, I guess I can wait. I was in Hong Kong for a few more months. So I put down my name and after I think a month and a half or two months, I got a call that a bag was ready for me. And I went to the store and I bought it immediately. I remember being so happy because this was my first crossbody camera bag. And I brought it with me everywhere. I actually use this for going out a lot because it was the perfect size. It was like this big and it could fit my wallet and a lot of other things. And the thing about this bag is that I really love how soft it was. And I remember what sold me on the bag was that you could wear it in two ways. And one way was you can put your hand through the ribbon part of the bag and you can hold it as a clutch bag with the ribbon like right on your hand and I found that so cool and it also came with this thing crossbody strap so you could wear it crossbody or you can wear it on your shoulder so I used this bag so many times and I since sold it and actually to be completely honest I do regret selling it I still go to all the pre-love websites and I search for this bag and sometimes I find it in a different color, like a, I found it one time in Fashion File in a red color and I was going to buy it but someone beat me to it. I'm thinking if I should still buy the bag that I sold. And actually, I can't decide. Like I've been trying to think, should I buy it or should I not? But every time I try to click on it, uh, something is holding me back and yeah. I remember I was in LA during this time and I asked my best friend to drive me to Cabazon. I wanted to see the outlet stores and I wanted to check out the, the luxury designer brands there. I did go to the Yves Saint Laurent store and I found this bag. This is a patent leather bag that had like a crocodile uh, print on it. It's not really made of crocodile skin but it's sort of like uh, it has an illusion but it was stitched to look like a crocodile pattern. It was like a vertical bag like this that you can carry with you, a very flat bag, but it was very large. And since buying that bag, I wore it everywhere. It was such an easy bag. Of course, during that time, patent leather was such a big thing. And I felt so cool whenever I, I would carry it. But since that time, since having that patent leather bag, I've learned my lesson. I don't like patent leather anymore it becomes sticky in time and it's so hard to take care of it like when you store it it sticks to itself like when you fold it and it's hard to really take care of it it's hard to take care of patent leather because in time it does deteriorate and the coating on top 
it does break down and become sticky and this bag did not turn sticky but it was on its way there that's why I sold it and my friend was selling it and she was convincing me like just buy it already like it's here it was in this violet color and it was made of patent leather but it was just so heavy I remember it. this bag is huge of course back then huge bags were in this downtown bag is in the large size it's really huge and I would carry it with me everywhere like it would really be like a big like sack <laughs> of patent leather I brought it with me even when I traveled it was really ridiculous but yeah I sold it since because it was too heavy and it was not functional the the strap of the bag was too small although it did fit my shoulder most times it was really pushing it like the bag would really be here in my armpit it's really meant to be carried handheld and I really hate bags like that I really hate big bags like that that you can't carry with your shoulder and although I loved it for a while and I did use it for a long time I sold it and I was happy to get rid of it because it was so heavy and, and function-wise, it did not serve me well. And this was a bag that I bought on sale online. This is the Chloe Marcy medium bag in the color blue. And I did show this bag before in my previous videos that it reminded me of a toilet seat cover. Like it has like this huge flap that you lift and you really can't put anything inside the flap there's just this small slit where you can put like maybe you can't even put your phone you can just put like maybe receipts but it was quite useless the design was so awkward although it has a hobo design and hobo bags are coming back in style it was a bag that i generally didn't reach for i think this bag is a perfect example of settling because initially i wanted a different bag not this bag i just saw this bag on sale the bag that i really wanted was the chloe calfskin mini marcy round crossbody bag that was the one i really wanted and that was the one i was really like searching for and trying to find the best deals for it but instead i found a bigger version a shoulder bag version that I really wasn't into and it's like the Chloe Paddington bag story all over again. I found it on sale and I snapped it up without really thinking much about it and actually if I just added a bit more I would have gotten exactly what I wanted which was the Chloe Marcy crossbody bag in a size mini but instead since I found this one on sale I felt like this was a better deal but really it wasn't because it's not the bag that I wanted. If you're gonna learn anything from watching this video, it's don't settle and just wait it out for the perfect bag, the bag that you really want because that bag is really meant for you. Don't settle for something in a different color, uh, don't settle for something in a different size or a different iteration of the bag because it's not the bag. In your head, it's going to replace the bag, but really, it's not. Because the bag that you fell in love with is exactly that bag. And yeah, don't settle, guys. I have since sold that bag. And of course, I did share it here in my vlogs that it reminds me of a toilet. So yeah, that's like a deal breaker, right? So I just stopped using it since that time. When I realized that it looked like that shape, that it reminded me of a toilet, and yeah end of story okay this backpack i also got on sale and i got it in a different color so of course the one i really wanted was the alexander wang backpack in the all leather the all leather backpack in the color black but of course i settled because it was on sale i settled for the nylon one with the leather trim and i got it in a lighter color in a, a beige color which I wasn't really into. Like for me, it looked like a military inspired bag and it looked funny in that color, but in the black color and it was all leather, it looked very edgy and cool. I did not get the bag that I wanted. And of course, because of settling, because of the sale price, I ended up not using it as much. I mean, I tried to use it, like there was like a week or two when I really like forced myself to use it, but then I found that I had to change my my outfit style so much to suit that backpack. And that's a no-no for me. Like usually 
I would be dressed already and then I would choose my bag and it should be a no-brainer like it should shouldn't be hard do not settle on sale items because they are not the items that you truly want yeah so in the end I did not get the backpack that I really wanted lesson learned once again This one was a good buy because I used it everywhere. It looks so cool. Uh, I love the fringe and I, I traveled with it a lot. Why did I sell it? I sold it because I wasn't using it anymore. I think I realized that I'm not a backpack sort of girl. I outgrew wearing backpacks. And until now, like whenever I look at backpacks, I still can't bring myself to buy one because I don't really like wearing backpacks. I would much rather have the bag in front of me or as a crossbody or as a mini bag. I don't really, I'm not really into backpacks. Although I did use that a lot. And yeah, I think it was already showing signs of wear, so that's why I, I sold it. But yeah, that was the only backpack that worked for me. I really liked the look of it, but I think as I got older, I realized that I'm not into backpacks. Maybe in my 20s it looked cool, like it had like that whole Coachella vibe. But I, as I got older, like now I'm in my 30s and going on my 40s, I don't think I could pull off a backpack anymore. Yeah, I haven't seen a backpack that I've fallen in love with totally at my age. So let's see where it goes. I bought this in 2019. I found it in Auckland, New Zealand. We were there to shoot for my show, Trending with Kelly, and I ended up passing through this vintage store and I found it there. It was sort of hanging there and I found it so cool. I only had like 10 minutes to shop and so I picked it up, I bought it, and I left. And I really like this bag but it was just too heavy. Like the chain itself and the design was not very smart and every time I would carry it I would have like marks on my shoulder because it was so heavy the bag itself the the vegan leather was not heavy but the chain was just so heavy I don't know why it was that way all over the bag it was just full of chains and I liked it I liked the design I mean at, at first glance it was a cool design but as I carried it through the day I would end up regretting it more and more like I I was so tired carrying that bag it was so heavy I would just throw the bag in frustration because it was so heavy and yet yeah, I think that is my last bag that uh, I've since sold I'm happy to announce that all the other bags have remained in my collection and I still love them so much and actually I'm, I'm too scared to let go of them because I might regret it and yeah, those are the bags that I've sold and the reasons behind it. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And please comment down below what you think of the bags that I've sold. And please share the bags that you've sold as well. I would love to hear from you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in my next video.